The end of summer means a new year for the South Florida Symphony. They are gearing up for their new season and promise to have some of their best music yet. Here's a clip from some recent South Florida Symphony performances. I think it's pretty unique. Uh, I, I would guess that most two by four islands <laughs> do not have a professional symphony orchestra as part of their makeup. Fifteen years ago, world-renowned conductor Sabrina Maria Alfonso came home to Key West to follow her dream. She founded the Key West Symphony Orchestra. Today, because of its reputation and its reach, it's been transformed into the South Florida Symphony Orchestra. For years, she was conducting all over the world, literally, and recording all over the world and her family was here and not able to enjoy the music. And it was a conscious decision that she made to go ahead and stop what she was doing elsewhere and make this her home for music. For each concert, musicians from around the country auditioned to come to Key West for a week of intense rehearsals and spectacular performances. They're selected based on their expertise and their ability to adapt to playing with a new group. It would cost this community about five million dollars to have a symphony orchestra the size and the professional level that we are. I think we're lucky and I think that the arts community and patrons embrace that. The orchestra is a major portion of the foundation of the local arts scene and it gets support from the Florida Keys Council of the Arts. We contribute to the quality of life and people choose to live here because of the arts community so there's a lot of give and take. You know, If they want it, they have to come and support it. All right, Jacqueline, you are gearing up for your 2013 through 2014 season, and you're going to be kicking it off with an event at Square One. Tell us about it. It's called Tropical Beats, and it's a new series that we've developed to bring music out of the traditional settings of the hall into non-traditional settings. Sort of a way to expand the audience, get people more comfortable with classical music, and um, enjoy all the senses being tantalized at the same time. So. Uh, Carolyn, Carmelo, and Dominique have been very kind to uh, create this wonderful opportunity for us. It's going to be several courses, there's going to be music, Marky Pearson will be there with his artwork to talk about his art, and then the trio, members of the Blue Door String Quartet, will be performing that evening. And it's just the wonderful beginning of a series of activities that will take place throughout the year to supplement the regular orchestra concerts. Now, when is the first concert, Jacqueline? The first concert is November 15th, and uh, we'll have series of tropical beats mixed into the season this year. So we'll have uh, the first one on October 7th, and then we'll have the concert on November 15th with the orchestra. And then in January, we're going to have three events. One will be a concert at the Tennessee Williams and the Cabaret uh, with Ellen Zwillick's Septet and the trio and, a, and the quartet performing together. Then there'll be an event following that over at the Marriott Beachside. And then the main concerts at the end of January. And then an event with the cello recital in February at the Yacht Club. And there will be an event at Shirley Freeman's house with Natasha and Zool, followed by the next night with a concert performance at the Tennessee Williams with them performing a recital. And then the wrap up of the season is the big concert at the end of March. And then chamber music will be May, June, and July, incorporating the studios of Key West and the Tennessee Williams Cabaret. Wow, so you have a jam-packed <laughs> season with lots of great <laughs> events coming up. And, and let's touch this morning on your education program, Jacqueline. I oh know that's gosh. important. We have uh, Marilyn Weber has been very kind and a big supporter and the founder of our program, Do It For Me, Music Education, the ME. And uh, this year, uh, we're going to be working in collaboration with the Florida Keys Council of the Arts with Liz Young's group, as well as the Arts Out Loud ladies, Donna and Joy, and all the children from the Isla Mirada area on down will be exposed to the uh, elementary ch school children to the music education program. And the first children's program is November 14th at the Tennessee Williams. And this year, it's the 500th anniversary of Florida. So they're gonna focus on the music education and the art history and vocabulary and all of the things that go into that. And um, what's particularly interesting is it's called Tales of Legendary Florida. And the tale of Florida, 
actually ends in the keys. So there'll be Chief Osceola and Flagler and all the components that go in between. It's going to be really phenomenal program. And Marilyn has been kind enough to launch our season with a $20,000 challenge. And uh, that means that people in the community will give and then she will match, match as they do. Wonderful. That's an awesome opportunity yes. then for the symphony. And it sounds like this 16th season is a season that people don't want to miss. That's right. We <laughs> call it Sweet 16. <laughs> I like it. Sweet 16. And get your tickets now because I know that they will go fast. For more information on the symphony, just check out the information that you see on the bottom of the screen. I look forward to the upcoming concerts. Thank you for being on this morning. Always a privilege. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for tuning in this morning. I'll be right back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and then again at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day. If I